morning folks. This is Greg. I'm back with you to do another review. It's been a long time. I did one several years ago on uh, uh, optics, uh, vortex binoculars and rangefinder and, uh, and a loophole rangefinder. That video had a, uh, it's got like 70,000 views and uh, there was a lot of good feedback on it. People seem to enjoy it. They like the way I do reviews and uh, asked me to do a lot more. Uh, I've been kind of busy with other things and I haven't really got around to having anything to review. But now, uh, this year, I have gotten into competitive shooting. Uh, I've always been a really good rifle shooter. Pistol, hmm, okay. Uh, qualified expert in the Marine Corps also on pistol, but I'm not that great of a shot, or wasn't. Um, I did a, a Marine Corps League pistol shoot this year back in late March. We shot uh, 7, 10, 15, and 25 yards. 10 rounds, slow fire, and I thought I did okay for, you know, just practicing for a week and shooting a 303, but sort of got my ass handed to me by a 72-year-old man. He won it, shot 390. Um, decided then I better work on my pistol shooting. Um, been a competitive athlete, or I've been a competitor all my life. I competed for 13 years in the Scottish Highland Games, but can't do that anymore really. I don't have access to the gyms uh, when I'm at work uh, for two weeks out of the month. And uh, just getting too old to do that, it's too hard on the body. But decided I'm gonna get be a competitive shooter this year. So after I got my ass handed to me on the uh, pistol range, I thought, well, I gotta get better. So dry firing, dry weapons training is a beautiful thing. Um, you can do a lot of it anywhere but it'll only go so far. I've been a big follower this year of uh, Chris Sinog uh, and his channel. I like a whole lot of his stuff, the uh, new rules of marksmanship. I would buy into most of it. Uh, well, actually I buy into all of it. And a lot of it's not really new rules. It's just things you should have been doing all along. But like I said, the dry weapons training, it gets boring and you can only go so far with it. So, Instead of having to go to the range all the time, shoot a real pistol, I decided, well, I'm going to get a pellet pistol. I can shoot it at my house. Don't piss off the neighbors. Don't get the police called on me. You get instant feedback. And it's really up my game. I've gone from shooting that 303 out of 400 to now I average probably a 382 to 390. And that's with this pellet pistol. And it's pretty accurate. It's... Uh, it's not like my SIG P320X5 Legion, but uh, it gets the job done. It's not as loud. This is a Crossman 1377 uh, classic, American Classic in 177 caliber. These things are, you know, you have to pump them, and you can pump them anywhere up to 10 pumps. Supposedly they will shoot uh, 600 feet per second on like five pumps and up to 695 feet feet per second on 10 pumps. Uh, and we'll kind of call bullshit on that. Uh, I've got a whole slew of me testing like five or six different pellets I'm going to share with you later and nothing came close to 695 feet. Uh, even a five point, I think it's a 5.2 grain uh, alloy pellet copper. But uh, anyway, it gets the job done. Uh, these things are very inexpensive. I bought this one off Amazon, 49 bucks. It was 69 on Midway. I ordered a lot of stuff off Midway, but you know, I have a, I'm an Amazon Prime member. Why pay extra for shipping when I can also save 20 bucks on it? Um, it's a little bolt action, single load. Pump it up, aim it, ready to go. It's got adjustable rear sights on it. You can adjust the windage left and right, and the elevation up and down right here. Probably can't see it, but. There's a tiny little screw right there and little screw right there for the windage. Uh, the windage is kind of funky in that when you loosen it up, you can move it left and right, but it also wants to twist a little bit. So you have to be real careful and keep it in line with the barrel. It's shooting pretty good. Like I said, I'm typically shooting 382 to 390 on that same course of fire right now, 7, 10, 15, 25, 10 rounds. Yes, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to pump up, but you know, pumping it six times usually is uh, the pellets are shooting most accurately with about six pumps. And 
I really didn't want anything with CO2 because most of the CO2 pistols I looked at uh, shoot 400, 450 feet per second, you know, and this thing will crank out to, you know, close to 600, maybe a little over 600 with a super lightweight pellet. Um, so I just like that, uh, I like that velocity. I can, you know, really drop back to 25 yards and I'm not seeing any drop on the uh, trajectory of the pellet. Yes, I have a really cheap holster for it, but it's better than sticking the cargo pocket of my pants. We'll let the dog shut up for a minute. I've been pretty happy with it so far, and uh, there's not a lot to review on it. I mean, hell, it's a pellet pistol. I'm not an air gunner, but this thing serves a good role in you know, being able to fire on a daily basis when I'm home and getting feedback. I've also gotten a uh, pellet rifle. I'm going to share a review and first impressions video on that with you later. I got a lot of info on several different kind of pellets too. Every gun, whether it's an air gun, uh, a real gun, rifle, pistol, there's a certain bullet, bullet weight that it likes. You know, a lot of it's the function of the velocity, which you know you do with your reloads and uh, you know handguns and rifles. This. You change your velocity, find out what a particular pellet likes, find out what pellets are the most accurate. And, you know, also harmonics of the barrel, how it's held, comes into play. So, it's a really good tool to practice basic marksmanship stuff. You know, front sight focus, your stance, your grip, your trigger control, your breathing. You know, all those things you can do somewhat in dry firing, but there's nothing like instant feedback or you know, really driving it home. And, uh, but yeah, let's jump into the uh, accuracy and velocity test on this thing and uh, show you what I got. The Gamo Luxor CU Pyramid Point 5.2 grain. That's these little copper things these little copper pellets and they've got this pyramid point on them which i think that really screws with the accuracy uh some of these that i've shot i've even seen where they tumble um so i average they had the highest velocity so on five pump 533.4 average spread of 1.49 uh six pump average velocity of 560.6 average spread of 1.124 the eight pump uh, average velocity of 615 feet per second with a spread of 1.638 and the 10 pump average velocity 663.6 and average spread of 2.94 and that's the lightest pellet I've got and the highest speed I've gotten and the box uh, says up to 695 feet per second with an alloy pellet but I've not seen that yet maybe on a standard day, sea level 59 degrees, maybe you'd see that because these were shot at 75 and 80 degrees. So it puts them at about a couple thousand feet uh, density altitude. But overall, I think that's a crap pellet. Just, unless you just want something really fast, that's, that's about all it's good for. Next up, we've got the Gamo Red Fire Polymer Tip 7.8 grain. So overall, the Gamo Red Fire Polymer Tip 7.8 grain, that was the most accurate pellet across the board. At five, five pump, it had an average velocity of 458.8 and an average spread of 1.082. Six pumps, average velocity of 490.6 uh, and average spread of 0 0.86. Uh, eight pump, average velocity of 540 feet per second and average spread 0.993 and at 10 pumps 574.4 feet per second average spread of 0.973 um, so across the board the most accurate pellet of the bunch that we fired these crossman premier 7.9 grain hollow point are literally some of the cheapest pellets you can buy but they're surprisingly accurate on the higher velocities at 8 and 10 pumps so the Crossman Premier domed hollow point 7.9 grain, <clears throat> it really surprised me on the uh, 10 pump. It had an average velocity of 569.6, but that is a super tight group right there. And it had three flyers 
um, it had an average spread of 1.223 and that's like the third best uh, behind the Excite uh, Spike 8.64 and the Gamo um, polymer tip. Um, if you threw those three flyers out, man, that is an awesome group. And it uh, being a 7.9 grain hollow point, probably pretty good for a hunting pellet. Um, otherwise, we've got the five pump came in at 460 feet per second, uh, 1.4167 on the average spread. And we've got the uh, six pump average velocity of 489.8, average spread of 1.65 and the eight pump average velocity 531 average spread 1.5067 next up is the h and excite 8.64 grain five pumps gave an average velocity of 446.4 feet per second and an average spread of 1.295 six pumps was 474.9 on the velocity with an average spread of 0 0.8805. Eight pumps was 523.8 on the velocity and 1.6025 on the spread. Ten pumps came in at 1.221 on the spread with a velocity of 557.5. I threw in a test at seven pumps just to see since there was such a difference from six pumps to eight. It came in at a velocity of 500.1 and a spread of 1.094. Now we have the Gamma Rocket Hardened Steel Copper Dome Tip 9.6 grain. This pellet is only slightly less accurate than the Gamma Red Fire Polymer Tip 7.8 grain and ranked number two overall. Five pumps gave an average velocity of 421 and an average spread on the group of 1.179. At six pumps, the velocity was 452.8 and group spread was 1.073. I threw the flyer out of the measurement here. Eight pumps gave a velocity of 497.5 and a spread of 0 0.98067. So on this pellet, eight pumps was actually a bit more accurate than six by nine hundredths of an inch but the group was moved right of center by a little over half an inch. Ten pumps gave a velocity of 528 and an average spread of 1.1367. And next up we've got the Winchester Round Nose 9.7 grain. Um, that's the heaviest pellet I've got. And I, that I've shot, and don't don't pay attention to where the groups are in relation to the bullseye. These were shot on different days, and the sights had been changed. So the winch uh, on the five pump, it had an average velocity of 473.8, with a spread of uh, average spread of 1.358 inches. Uh, six pump average velocity 505, with an average spread of 1.445. Eight pump average velocity of 550.6. Well, average spread of uh, 1.417 and on the 10 pump average velocity of 581.9 with an average spread of 1.509 so <clears throat> as far as a hunting tip I mean you know you'd think it'd be good because it's heavy but uh, the Winchester was actually better and uh, I'm sorry the uh, Crossman hollow point was actually better especially at at 10 pumps and it's a uh, it's two grains lighter. The crossman was uh, 7.9, but much more accurate than the uh, Winchester round nose. So there you have it. You've gotten to see a whole lot about this uh, pellet pistol. Crossman, again, it's the Crossman uh, 1377 American Classic. They also make it in 22 caliber. Uh, obviously, it will not shoot as hard in 22. I do like the 22s a little bit better because I got kind of big fingers and. Those little 17 caliber pellets, they're uh, hard to hold on to sometimes. But yeah, I hope you like the video. I hope you like the review. It's, it's not a really in-depth review, but hell, it's a pellet pistol. What is there to review about it? Um, I hope you like this video as much as you did the uh, optics video review I did a few years ago. 
and I'm going to be cranking the channel back up. Things I'm going to put on the channel mostly to do with shooting sports reviews, insights, chronicle some of the shooting sports uh, events I'm doing, and uh, entertain. You know, probably give you a few stories about uh, aviation, aviation inside stuff. I'm a 747 captain for an international airline, so travel all over the world two weeks a month. Two weeks I'm home, I get to shoot a lot. But some really interesting stories in there. There's one in particular that uh, also goes along with shooting. I think you'll find it uh, pretty interesting and amazing. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Check back. Please like, subscribe, and share the content. And over the next few months, I've, I've got several things planned, so we got a lot more content coming. I may even change the channel name. It's V1 Productions right now. Um, that was an old video production company I have. I still do video production, do uh, some music, music videos, uh, comedy shorts. I've gotten some uh, scripts uh, that I've written in the works. May or may not produce any of those myself. I don't know. But uh, thinking about changing the channel to one name that's real catchy to me is Cranky Old Marine. That's what I am. I'm kind of cranky. Another one is maybe Gunny's Guide. Uh, I was never a gunnery sergeant in the Marine Corps. I was a staff sergeant. But due to a little comedy series I did years ago called the Gunny G Show, a lot of friends, a lot of co-workers, they call me Gunny. I just kind of have that personality and that bearing, so the name fits. So maybe Gunny's guy. Anyway, hit that like and subscribe button and hope to see you again.